Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna look at the filter section and the modulation section in Vital. So to activate a filter, pretty simple, just turn it on. It comes as default as a low pass filter, which you can change with this slider to first a band pass and then to a high pass. You also have resonance down the side. And down the bottom, that is obviously the actual cutoff control. You have key track, which just enables you to sort of change the filter position depending on where you press the keys on your keyboard. So with it turned up, the lower on the keyboard you press, the lower the cutoff will be. And the higher you go, the higher the cutoff will be. It's just to help simulate instruments like a piano, for example. Mix should be fairly self-explanatory. And then we have the drive dial, which on analog doesn't really do a whole lot, but it kind of adds saturation. It's much more noticeable though on different presets like dirty so if you click up here go to dirty you'll find that drive has much more of an impact on the sound like i say just adding a bit of sort of saturation to it there are other presets of course we've got things like formant comb so you can get some really sort of interesting filter shapes going on which really affect the sound in very unique ways adding to the texture of the sound and then the routing section, which just enables you to pick which oscillators and sampler is going to go through filter one. Now, by default, the initialized patch in Vital, the first oscillator is always routed through to filter one, the second oscillator to filter two, and the third oscillator just goes straight to the effects page. So you can either change it here to filter one, for example, or you can just add it to the filter here. Now filter two, this means I can actually route filter one's output signal through to filter two. So let's just talk about filter two quickly. So it's exactly the same, but when you have, for example, on the oscillator, if you select filter one and two, this actually sends an independent signal to both filter two and filter one. So it's not in series, it's in parallel, unless you actually click the filter two button here. And then that means anything going through filter one is then routed through to filter two. And if I select filter one here, then we know that the signal is going in series from the first oscillator through filter one and then through filter two. Can be perhaps a little bit confusing to start off with, but it does enable you to do some pretty interesting routing in Vital for the filters. All right, so I'm just gonna put that back to a low cut. And let's start talking about how to modulate parameters within Vital. Uh, so just as an example, I'm just gonna very like quickly set up a couple of wave shaping parameters over here, just so we've got something to modulate and play around with. I can deactivate filter two for now. And let's use envelope two because we know that envelope one is really sort of tied to the dynamics of the sound. So we might not want to actually change the shape of envelope one and affect the dynamics. So let's just use envelope two. I'm gonna add just a little bit of attack to start off with. And modulating in Vital is as simple as literally clicking and dragging it and just dropping it on whichever function you want to modulate. So we can drop it on the filter cutoff, for example. get a nice sort of pad sound. We can also change the steepness or the sharpness of the attack as well. So we can have it going much quicker or much slower. But one really awesome thing about Vital is that we can actually preview modulation on the fly. So what I'll do is I'll just play it and I'll show you what I mean. So as we play, I can click and drag envelope two. and we can actually change the functions of it in real time. So what I can also do while I'm doing this is actually change the amount that I want. I can also change it to the negative. So we can actually be pretty precise and just really figure out what parameters we want before we have to drop the automation on there. Uh, and I can then go to a different function, mess around with that, see what that sounds like. I can go to pitch, for example change the amounts there. So it's really cool that you can actually just literally click and drag this around, change it as needed. Uh, and also if I want to, I can hold down the shift key, which will change it to bipolar modulation, which is also really cool. So if I'm happy with that, I just let go. And then that automation is set. And of course, once it's there, I can actually change the amount if I want to, just by clicking in this little dot here, or the little circle, I should say. 
you also get one on the object that you're automating. And if I want to get rid of it, I can either right click and remove this modulation, sorry, not automation, modulation. I can make it unipolar here as well, or to get rid of it, you can just simply double click and that'll get rid of it as well. All right, so let's look at the LFO section. So I'm just gonna get rid of the modulation on envelope two, and let's just add LFO one to the filter cutoff. Let's just play that. Pretty simple stuff. The default shape is a triangle. You can get to many different shapes. If you click here, there's like a load of different presets. If you go to the factory bank, which is obviously what comes with the free version of Vital, got lots of different LFO shapes, which you can use. Could change the time of these here. So this is still synced to the beat at the moment. So this is tempo synced. You can just change this to seconds if you want a bit more of a free oscillator timing. And we have a very interesting one, which is key track, which basically looks to the incoming notes for the frequency, and then it modulates the LFO by that frequency. So it's a very, very fast modulation because obviously the notes coming in are actually reasonably high frequency. So, has a kind of unique effect, but it can be used to make sort of really bright, sparkly, or like fastly modulating leads, which is actually quite cool. We actually do that for one of the future bass sounds that we make in the course. So other things of note here are you can smooth out all of the fades and everything with this little button here, and then we can sort of drag them around. Uh, you can add more points to make this whatever shape you want. You've also got this grid here. So at the moment, the automation kind of snaps to the grid line when you get close to it. So we can change this to say 16th, for example. So we've got a sort of finer control. And if you want to, you can turn on this little draw tool and then we have different shapes that we can draw into the LFO. So we've got steps, half step, down ramps, up ramps, and then try. So we can make some really like cool different shapes. And now one really interesting thing that you might not know is you can actually right click this, go copy, and then paste that as a wavetable. And then you've got this LFO shape as a wavetable, which is pretty neat. You also have a smooth function. So let's just make this all jaggedy for the moment. I'm gonna turn off that as well so it's nice and sharp. So that's without, oh, let's do it with a down ramp. Uh, so obviously you can hear it's very jaggedy, but as we smooth it out, it just becomes smoother, but pretty nice feature to have. You can change the trigger mode. So you, at the moment it's on trigger, which means every time the note is pressed, the LFO will re-trigger. You can have it to just sync to the tempo or the envelopes or loop point and loop hold. Delay is pretty self-explanatory. It just delays the time that the LFO is gonna start from. And then we have our random oscillators. So let's just get rid of the modulation on LFO one and let's add a random oscillator to the cutoff. So as you can see, it's just sort of does a random sine wave on Perlin. Well, it's not essentially a sine wave. It's a modulated sine wave. You have different settings. Uh, one that's really kind of interesting is the Lorenz Attractor. So this will basically delay the randomness for whatever setting you've got in here. So at the moment it will delay it for one beat. And then you get the randomness. So it's more than just a standard randomized function. It's actually a little more advanced than that, which is quite cool. Again, you can choose the different settings for it. Seconds, tempo, dotted, triplets, or the key track. And then let's just talk about this little section here. So note, it's very much like key track. So whatever sort of item you drop this on, so let's just put it on the cutoff for the moment and remove the random automation. So again, it depends on where you hit the key on the keyboard to what position the modulation will be. Obviously you don't have to just use this on the cutoff. You could use it on any parameter in Vital. The velocity, fairly self-explanatory. So this will be based on how hard you hit the keys on your keyboard. And you can use that to modulate any of the parameters within Vital. Lift, so that's from the moment that you lift your finger off the key of the keyboard. So you can have it trigger some sort of setting or whatever in Vital. 
octonote. So this is a bit different. So it's similar to note in that it depends on which key you actually hit. Let me just stick this on the cutoff. So let's, for example, go from one C up an octave and you'll find that when we get to the next C, it resets. And that's what the oct note control does. Pressure and slide are both to do with uh, particular keyboards. Can't remember the exact name, but there are ones called like the Roly soundboard, which have like rubber keys on and they're actually pressure sensitive and also have different sensors for like sliding up and down and wiggling from side to side, stuff like that. So you can use these here to modulate the various parameters using those functions on the keyboard. Stereo, so let's just drop this on the filter cutoff. And you can see there, we've now got what looks like two sort of filter cutoffs. And depending on the amount that I set, we can change how stereo affected they are. So just another way of adding stereo information to your sound. And obviously it doesn't have to be again on the filter cutoff, could be on any parameter in Vital. So let's get rid of those. And then another random one. So as you can imagine, every single time a note is pressed, it just gives you a random position of whatever parameter it is, depending on how much you've set this by. So if you want lots of randomness, you can have this right up. If you want very little, just a little bit of variation, then you can set this right down. Okay, so these first two videos that you've seen now really cover the basics, the very basics of how Vital works and should be enough if you want to just get started making your own sounds. Now, what we're gonna do in future videos is go into the rest of the functions and the more intermediate and advanced parts of Vital, but we're actually gonna do it by making sounds from scratch as it's much easier to sort of learn what everything does when you have a context or framework to apply your knowledge. It's also a lot more interesting. So this will be an ongoing thing. We will add more and more as time progresses. So definitely subscribe and enable all notifications. Plus we do loads of other music production tutorials and tips. So feel free to request sound design or music production tutorials in the comments. Please like the video if this was helpful to you and don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. All the best guys and girls. Thank you very much for watching.